Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt, a photographer based in Northern California. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Sandmark 6X teleconverter lens, for lack of a better word, for the iPhone. And this is a really interesting idea. And I wanted to offer you my review today. So the first thing I want to hit on is the idea, the concept, as at least as I see it with this, with this product. So, you know, first thing I want to say is I do want to be clear that Sandmark sent me this for free. They sent me the Sandmark 6X lens and they sent me the case that you need to attach it to an iPhone. Otherwise, I wasn't compensated. I don't have a deal with them. They're not a brand sponsor of this channel or anything like that. And I think as you'll see in this review, particularly the conclusions, I'm going to give you my unbiased um, opinion, which to some extent is, is not entirely positive. Um, so, you know, stick with the review, hear what I have to say, but just to kind of rest assured, I am giving you my honest opinion, my honest feedback on this product. So let's talk about the concept here. Well, the concept is it's a teleconverter. And, you know, for those of you who are wildlife photographers or photographers in general, you're probably familiar with the idea of teleconverters. And the idea is that a teleconverter is a secondary lens that we're adding to our primary lens on a camera. And it's increasing the focal length by a factor at the downside of some loss of image quality and a decrease in the amount of light that gets through the camera lens. And without getting too technical, that's the general idea. And that's exactly what this is. This is a really interesting 6X teleconverter that you're attaching to the lens that's already built in on your iPhone. And as a product, as a concept, I think it's a really cool idea because, you know, the best camera is the one you carry with you. We've all heard that adage probably a thousand times, and it's certainly true. I mean, iPhones and Androids are just so good now that they can really be that, that camera that you always have in your pocket. You're going to have one probably with you anyway for the purposes of staying in touch with the world. So using it as a camera it makes a lot of sense, particularly for those of us out there who aren't professionals and who just want to enjoy the experience of taking pictures and documenting life. And uh, these cameras are a really good stand-in. They kind of always have been, back to the first generation. So you can attach this lens to one of two different spots on the case. And you'll see one here and one here. There's none here. Now this is the ultra wide lens on the iPhone. So you don't have an option there and that's kind of logical, right? Why would you necessarily want to increase the, the range of that? Now you can attach, in, on, in this case, it's the, it's the 14. So I have a 1X and a 3X option. And those are equivalent on the iPhone to the 1X is a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent and the 3X is a 77 millimeter full frame equivalent. On the iPhone 15, I believe it's a 5X, right? So you have the option of now you know, adding this to the 5X, which is going to be what, something around, I don't know, maybe 100 millimeters uh, uh, equivalent focal length. So if you do a little math there, you know, you have the 24 times um, 6X gives you a 144 millimeter full frame equivalent. That's for the 1X, 48 megapixel uh, image. And then you can also add the 6X to the 3X of um, telephoto uh, lens on the iPhone. And that's going to say 77 times 6x, which gives you, let me see here, a uh, 462 millimeter focal length. Now that's what initially uh, prompted me to accept this really as an option to review because I was like 460 millimeters, that's proper telephoto, that's wildlife telephoto range. And um, I actually shoot a lot of my wildlife photography with a 400 millimeter lens on a full frame. So that's pretty compelling. So the next thing I want to talk about was use cases. So, okay, you've got this range now. So conceptually, you know, you're looking at something in that kind of mid-range to ultra telephoto range uh, capability. So if we just went on focal length, 
we could be using this for something like telephoto landscape photography or wildlife. Those are two use cases that I think make the most sense for a lens like this. So next I wanted to talk about build quality. The build quality is really actually very good. I have no faults, no issues at all with the build quality of this lens. It's hefty, but not too heavy. It feels very well made, well machined. It's a metal construction on the exterior. I think it's aluminum. Um, it has a built-in uh, aluminum thread that you use to attach to the case, which is also machined aluminum to receive it. So the, the screwing function, it grips it really well. There's no trouble. I love that it's, that it's metal. Um, it feels very solid when it's attached to the case. There's no play. I mean, um, I was shocked, to be totally frank with you, how well-built the lens is. Now, it's not cheap coming in at, um, I'll put the price on the, on the screen here, but in the kind of 100 to 100 and, uh, to 200 range. So it's not a cheap lens, but um, it's very well-built. And in that sense, you're getting what you pay for. The, the glass is pretty good as well. Um, you know, it comes with this filter thread, so you could put filters on here. So it just feels well-designed, well-machined, well-made, um, like a premium product in hand. The case it comes with, the bag it comes with, you know, the lens cap, it's, it's just, it feels like a good product in hand, and it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a problem to use it, and it's kind of a joy to, to use and to experience. That's the lens. The case is um, a little bit of a different story, I guess. Um, I mean, as a product, it, it's really, it was really nice to hold. Coming right out of the box, um, I felt like I really like the texture of it. It felt like, if you know what it felt like? I've been using this for the last month or two, and I've had the case on my camera. It felt like I bought an iPhone case. And that's probably a good thing. It's basically just like another product for an iPhone case that you would buy. Um, but I will say, uh, you'll notice here, it's worn, it's really worn away in this area here, right? Like it's, the finish is gone. And what happened here is I was using some hand sanitizer, uh, cause we were traveling and I, I think I went to the bathroom or something like that. I used some hand sanitizer and I didn't let the hand sanitizer dry. And so the alcohol or whatever chemicals are in the hand sanitizer wore away the finish. And I'm, I have a hard time knocking Sandmark for that. Um, I've destroyed passports with DEET before, for example, and um, you know those are pretty durable. So these chemicals we get in these consumer products are pretty insane. So it, it wore it away, but um, you know it's still functional and working quite well. I've also noticed um, when I take it out of my pocket, sometimes um, these bits here, um, you can kind of hear it. So these catch on stuff. So I've noticed as I take stuff out of my take it out of my pocket. I have noticed it, it clips a little bit here um, on my pants when I'm taking it off. Oh, you know what? Sorry, I just got an alert for uh, a campsite in Yosemite that I'm trying to book at the end of July for my birthday. So I'm gonna try to book that right now. One second. I don't have enough internet service to load recreation.gov, so I'm not gonna get that campsite, which is kind of a pain. Next thing I wanna talk about is functionality. Now this is sort of the big, this is the big part of this, which is that the functionality is really everything. I mean, if the concept behind this lens is that, you know, if I'm right on this concept, which is that the best camera is the one you carry with you, part of that is the ease of use and just the plug and play capabilities of modern cell phones to execute. And that's where like, it falls a little short for me to be honest with you. Um, and that's maybe part Sandmark and part iPhone. Um, functionally, you know, when you, when you screw it on to the phone and you try to take pictures, there's a, there's a tug and, and pull, you know, just sort of like tug it, push and, push and pull to the use that's a little exhausting in the field. Um, you have to focus using the manual, using the autofocus of the iPhone first, just to get kind of like a baseline autofocus sort of where it is. Your image will not, most of the time will not be in focus, even though the 
phone thinks it's in focus. And this has to do with the interplay, like the fact that it's got a 6X teleconverter, but the phone isn't really like, has an option to tell it that it has a 6X teleconverter on the lens. So it's sort of focusing with the idea that it's got that 1X. So it just, it, it, it thinks it's in focus, it's not. And then you need to use the, the manual focus ring here to adjust focus to get a nice um, in-focus image. You also need to use a third-party app most of the time. Um, I did find that if I was using the 1X lens on the iPhone, I could use the built-in camera app. And I think the built-in camera app did a little bit better job with stabilization than, for example, the Moment app. Now, the benefit of the Moment app is it allows you to dedicate and, and tell it which lens you want to use. So if you're using the 3X lens, you can select 3X and it will just work only on 3X. When you're using the Apple built-in camera app, it defaults to the, to the lens it thinks you're using. So if you're using the 3X with the Sandmark screwed onto 3X, but it thinks you're using the 1X, which happens often, you end up with this kind of weird thing where you can, you're using the 1X, but you see the barrel of the Sandmark lens. You're not looking through the lens, you're looking through the camera next to it. It's just not functional in that sense. So getting back to the use cases, I'm not sure I would recommend this as, a, as an option for wildlife photography. So obviously image quality is also pretty important. And I wanted to share with you a few images that I took with the lens and without. So here, this first example that you're looking at here is a shot from near Joshua Tree down in Southern California. And this is the shot with the 1X lens. So this is what you would have gotten on your iPhone, you know, without um, the teleconverter. And when applying the teleconverter, you can see the dramatic difference in the field of view. So the image I think is pretty sharp, um, at least, you know, when viewed in this context in a, in a kind of like iPhone snapshot type of way. As you start to unpack it um, from a more photography angle, uh, some of the limitations of the combination of using a 6X teleconverter and using an iPhone are very apparent. A teleconverter is going to amplify any issues with the iPhone. It's also um, subject to its own challenges as well. So, you know, off the bat, I think the color, the, the you know, image quality is, is good. You know, at this distance, uh, you know, you can have things like heat haze also may not have completely nailed the autofocus or the focus here due to some of the challenges around implementation. But, you know, it's a pretty good image that would sharpen up quite nicely with a little bit of editing and, um, you know, some typical kind of like Photoshop or Lightroom edits. Um, the other thing I wanted to note, some of the failings I see in the images are, you know, the this vignetting. So there's this color vignette that you see here. Um, which I think is light leaking in uh, at the mount site where the where the lens screws on to the camera mount, uh, to the phone mount. And then the other thing is uh, there seems to be some indication of decentering of the lens. Um, you can see, particularly if you look here at, at sort of an unedited version here, um, this area here on the right side seems to have more out of focus blur around the perimeter than the left side does. Um, the bokeh in general is kind of like a little weird. I mean, it's almost like a pinhole bokeh. So it's like this part's more in focus than this outer ring here. So you can see like this part's blurry, but this part's sharp. So, you know, when you start to unpack these photos as like photography as opposed to just iPhone photos in a sense, they start to break down a little bit. Um, but I'm not sure that's totally fair to the intended use case. And I just want to be clear because there were some hesitations I have about using the lens due to the image quality. But um, at the same time, I'm not sure those are fair hesitations for most people for whom this type of lens is targeting. So just a couple other examples. I mean, this was another shot kind of on the road. Uh, with the iPhone and then with the Sandmark lens attached. So you can see just like a dramatically different field of view and it allows you, it really opens the door to perspectives like this, which I think are really cool um, and definitely missing when you have just an iPhone. So if we keep it in the context of that, I think it's actually 
really nice image quality that goes well with the, with the iPhone, the type of use cases that you would have. Just a couple other snapshots, you know, you can see again, kind of like the, the really present color vignetting here. Um, I see some evidence of chromatic aberration in the highlights are pretty significant evidence. You can see kind of like purple and green fringing here um, in the, in the, um, in the highlights and where there's extremes that may be the iPhone uncorrected uh, with the Sandmark lens amplifying those issues, or maybe something with the lens. And then, um, yeah, I took some more shots here where you can see kind of the field of view that would be on, on, this is the three X lens on the iPhone, very over sharpened, you know, but also like kind of falls apart in terms of the image. And then here's the Sandmark image. So it may not be quite as sharp as we might want it to be, but the rendering is like, I think actually quite nice, um, good colors and sort of a nice photographic look to it. Now I do want to talk about video. And this is something that I don't think was that well covered in, well, any of the other reviews I talked about, but is actually maybe the saving grace for this lens. Video doesn't need to be as rigorous, as, as intensely precise and, and high image quality as a photo needs to be. And that's partially because we're not looking and consuming video in the same way that we're consuming photography. Yes, you need to be probably on a, on a tripod or really well anchored, but you can get pretty darn good image quality out of this combination. And you can shoot at 120 frames or 240 frames per second, 1080p. And you can get pretty cool wildlife documentary footage using this setup. And that's actually pretty compelling. And I'd argue more compelling than doing it for stills photography. All right, so let's just talk conclusions here. It's a mixed bag and I, I'm not sure exactly what to say. Um, I, think, I think you have to kind of make up your own mind in terms of what your use case would be for a lens like this. If I were really good at iPhone videography and I wanted to add to my kit the capability to shoot, you know, a telephoto range, I wouldn't hesitate to pick up this lens to fill that gap. If I didn't own a DSLR and my primary camera was an iPhone and I shot landscape photography, I wouldn't hesitate to pick up this lens to add to my kit to shoot landscapes. I think if I were trying to say, you know, I would use this over or I would use this to supplement a DSLR, that's not me, right? Like I'll, I'll shoot the DSLR. Um, the image quality is better. There's a reason why we choose DSLRs over iPhones in the first place. And putting a 6X teleconverter on the iPhone lens is not going to change the sensor. It's not going to change the performance of uh, the camera and, you know, things like that. So, you know, it's a little tricky. I, I think my end conclusion is Sandmark have done themselves, a, they've, they've really produced a very premium high quality, good lens, but I'm not sure that the use case is that clear to me. Um, unless you are someone who shoots basically an iPhone exclusively, and, um, and this would just be an additional lens in your kit, just like me buying a you know, new Telephoto Prime or something like that for my wildlife photography DSLR, or I should say mirrorless, you know, camera kit would be. Um, so it's kind of a tricky thing. I think I give it really high marks on build quality. I think it's pretty darn good image quality. Um, it feels, you know, very durable. It feels like a good product that's going to work with future generations of iPhone, right? Like I'm using it on a 14. It's they build these great cases, they can add it to a 15 or a 16. So you're gonna have that 6X capability for any future iPhone that you might buy. Um, so there's a lot to like about it. Um, and there's a lot to feel like um, I'm a little confused, right? Like as to what, where this would fit in. 
I think pricing wise, even though it's expensive, like, you know, you're talking about a little under $200 for the case and the lens, that's pretty cheap if you think of it as a photography lens. So they're kind of walk, they're walking this line here where it's like very good photography equipment that's designed for iPhone. So as an iPhone accessory, it's a little expensive perhaps, a little bit eye shot, eye watering or like surprising. But as a photography implement or lens, as a teleconverter, it's not. I mean, it's not that expensive. Like this is a well-made teleconverter that's a 6X. If you were to get like the 2X Nikon teleconverter for Z system, I think that's like almost $600. So like four or five times the price. So. Uh, you know, I think it's actually pretty reasonably priced for what it is. I think you just have to know that you have a good use case for it. So I hope this is useful for you. Um, I, you could tell I'm kind of finishing this up a little bit confused, not totally sure where I stand. And I'm curious what you think, you know, if you, if you have comments on this or questions, please let me know. I mean, I'm going to hold on to this for a little bit and use it. Um, so I'm happy to do subsequent testing or, you know, do things that might be helpful for you to, to understand you know, um, where things are and, and if it's a valuable product for you. So thanks a lot for watching and take care. And thanks again to the folks at Sandmark for saying this to me for a review and to use. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.